Well, during the quarantine, it's been especially hard for my um, clients in my studio because obviously we rely on so much equipment to do everything for our fitness training and just our skill building in the air. It's so air specific. So with none of that left, we have nothing to lift up on. Um, we're just so reliant on our tools in that sense. So we've been coming up with different online workouts that we can do at home um, using some of the calisthenic stuff that I've done with you before and doing a lot of conditioning. We're kind of evening out our body, so we're getting a lot more leg workout now, which is great. And we're okay. trying to keep our aerial muscles in shape, but um, that's what's going to be great about today because we're going to need your help to figure out ways to utilize those muscles without actually having a hoop to lift up on or a pole. Um, it's hard to find those overhead exercises to keep our muscles up, but we want to stay in shape. So when we open again, we can get back up in the air without feeling like big, heavy donuts <laughs> hanging from a string. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's pretty appetizing. Donuts are pretty good. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> appetizing, but maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. Pretty I feel good. like everybody's upper bodies are starting to melt away. So um, yeah, we've been yeah. doing leg stuff. We've been doing high intensity stuff. We've been doing flexibility, uh, just finding other ways to get in cardio, strength, flexibility, range of motion, but we still don't really have a way to recreate our, our aerial environment. So um, we're looking for targeted exercises for those kinds of things. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go over that for sure. And um, I, um, so we talked about the struggles, but is there anything that, uh, that you discovered was actually, you know, a good habit that you built during this, this, this times? Because, you know, it's also good to remind people that we could actually also build some cool habits and you know it's not just shit basically i mean it's mostly bad but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think yeah. i definitely enjoy going outside more obviously alone but um i'm doing a lot more just walking bike riding um fitness stuff but also just fun stuff that i don't usually have time to do because i'm so busy training specifically what i do all the time so it's been nice to have some balance and maybe not have my, my upper body and my um, arms always be exhausted and tight, but they're loosening a little bit more. I'm getting more flexibility and I'm getting to have a little bit more balance than I ever did, I think. Um, yeah. So that's been, that's been the upside to it. There has been a lot of exploration and we've been occupying ourselves with dance classes and uh, just stuff that's fun that's not maybe so intense on the body all the time so we've yeah. gotten a nice little variety and mixture but so kind of like, like a little bit of rest too i mean a, a, a more balanced regimen in a way yeah i think it's really important now to have a because we're doing such similar stuff in our studio um even though we will be able to have a killer workout and not be doing it every day but taking breaks in between and, and switching it up so like i'll try to do a cardio day where I'm just like, you know, riding my bike, walking, something really easy, but I'm getting my heart rate up. And mm -hmm. then another day I'll do, um, you know, really intense leg day. And then I'll do a day where I'm just focusing on the core. And then after that, maybe I'll do a stretching day for a little bit more rest and to sort of um, recenter myself after all the strength stuff. So that's something that I don't think I was getting before because I think we're all so hardcore about our what we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Which, it's been yeah. good to sort of rotate activities. Cool. Well, I mean, it's good, you know, at least finding balance. I'm just uh, pausing because there's uh, one of my homies from Paris who's an EMT. So props to him, man. He's like saving life right there. And he just oh, walked in. Oh, hero. So, and he's a fucking beast, man. He's like, uh, he's the 30 pull-up guy, you know, so he, he, he got it. He's, <laughs> he's on the calisthenics lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's cool to see uh you know, worldwide people joining. It's pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, it's cool. So basically, yeah, we can, we, we figure out balance. It's a, uh, I'm doing that as well. So, I mean, balancing out things, feeling that we got to also uh, rest and, uh, and take uh, some time off at some point. It's, uh, well, I feel like you're already really good at that to begin with. I mean, like you're already got your regimen kind of down. So do you feel like it's changed for you a lot since the quarantine or is yeah, it kind of the same? 
I mean, it's the thing is, it's forced me to work out less, really, because, you know, I want to keep some immune system uh, uh, ready to fight anything that's coming my way. So I've shortened mm -hmm. my workouts to 30 minutes a day, really. You know me, I could work out for two or three hours, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes you're doing hundreds of push-ups a day, and, like, yeah. <laughs> you're so like, that's oh, you hour four, it's fine. Yeah, so when you, when, you go, when you go to the beach or when you go to the park or, you know, a proper training session, it's, it's most likely going to be a, a little more hardcore. So I kept it more intense, but shorter, a lot shorter. So yeah, and I think when you're seeing all your friends and you're, like, meeting up with training buddies, you tend to go on longer than you should. Yeah, it's driving us <laughs> a lot more than, than uh, so... But I'm trying to take that as a as a healing time and uh, and uh, and take a little more time off of, of doing thousands of reps every day, you know. But mm -hmm. I'm still doing a bunch of them, but not as you know, not as regularly. I mean, not as much. Basically, just the volume is a little lower, just more intense, packed up in a short amount of time, which works pretty well. It makes me, you know, it, keep, it keeps you really tired. And uh, maybe we can get into that uh, when we go when we talk about the workouts. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people that I've experienced, they, they like to do those like, like lunchtime workouts. So yeah. some people are, a lot of people are still working from home. So they yeah. maybe only have an hour for lunch and now nobody has to drive or travel. So that's kind of yeah. cool. But then you have the time to do that short, intense workout and, and yeah. have your lunch. Yeah. And that's, um, I mean, it's a, it's a big muscle group. So because I'm, I'm transitioning with what we talk about, what we'll talk about, about the, the pooling and better because because mm. uh, you, you get to focus a lot on what you're doing and then it creates a lot of tension and then you get pretty good results I mean you know it's uh, it's it's a it's basically a, a, a pros within the cons <laughs> you know what yeah. I, mean? <laughs> I mean if that makes any sense but um so so yeah I had a um, I thought I, I, I thought about what we discussed and so I did um, line up a bunch of um, a bunch of different movements that people can do. I have uh, basically a, a block of things that people can do without anything. And then people, uh, a block of things that people can do with bands. So hopefully some of uh, the aerialists that you work with have bands and, 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 um, and if they don't, then, uh, you know, they can always rely on the stuff that doesn't need anything really. But, awesome. Um, but yeah, do you want to, do you want to get uh, started on this on the, yeah, let's do it. Basically, there's um, there's a, a few things. Uh, uh, so I'll I'll just say that I'll say it and I'll put a link to the stuff that. Uh, but I've done a bunch of videos that are free on online calisthenics the the page, and uh, so if people want to check it out, there's a bunch of movements that are already on there. Uh, but I'll I'll do it again here just to show you uh, what I'm talking about. And basically, the the easiest thing that people can do to work their back, really, in my opinion is to do the, the, the Superman plank, you know, the one where you lay on your chest, where you lift your feet up, your chest up, and, mm -hmm. um, and then you do variations of that. So you do extensions, you really just retract your scapula together, and then you're um, lifting your legs up so you can play with the legs. So it's basically a full body workout. And if you do it long enough, if you do sets, if you do Tabata -ta of that, for example, if you do 20 seconds of reps, and then 10 seconds, uh, sorry, 10, yeah, 20 seconds of rest, of reps, repetitions, and then 10 seconds of rest, and you pile it up over four minutes, it creates a tremendous workout already. And, um, and, uh, and I can demonstrate uh, one, one rep right now because I might, might not be able to do the full four minutes, but I can show <laughs> you uh, what it looks like. It's really just, uh, I don't know if you can see everything here. Yeah. Hopefully you can, and it's basically so. You stay there, you keep your feet together, put your hands up. I mean, you can't see my hands right now, but the idea is to open the shoulders out, right? You want to open uh, the shoulder uh, rotators, and then you go back. Mm. Up. It's kind of nice. like retracting, extending. So yeah. It's just the retraction and an extension. And you can do extension. That feels good. It really gets the middle. Do... Say what? Sorry. Oh, I said that feels good. It really gets the middle. <laughs> yeah, the thoracic spine is just so mm -hmm. it's going to really create a lot of tension. So you can do extract, I mean, retraction. So straight to retract and point your feet up. 
back there. So it's really just those reps. And you extend and go forward. And you keep the shoulders rotated out, right? So you really want to uh, squeeze your shoulder blades together and keep your traps. Down this way. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Retract it. Mm -hmm. Just as if you're doing a little shrug, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then you keep that posture and then you open. It's kind of like a fly on the floor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's really good. Honestly, it will burn you to hell. Not kidding. Yeah. It's like you, you, you four minutes of that, guaranteed result. And, and when you come in, you're trying to pinch your shoulder blades together, right? Yeah, exactly. You retract your shoulders together. And what's important is to try to lift your hands, the palms, at least as high as your shoulders. Mm -hmm. A lot of people keep their hands low, so it doesn't get a good opening, but you want to oh, yeah. really, yeah, you feel that? It's like it's going to really retract everything down and mm -hmm. it's going to pull the shoulder blades down, so it's going to create a great opening. I mean, that's even a lot of work just for your arms, too. Oh, yeah. Just, it's, just it's to keep form. good form. If you got your elbows up and you're pulling your shoulders down and you're yeah. squeezing your back, you're getting yeah. a lot of stabilizing, too. In the shoulder yeah, here. and once you point your feet up, you'll mm -hmm. see that. That you, it's going to squeeze your glutes. It's going to be a butt workout. It's going to be a hamstring workout. It's going to burn off your calves, even the plant of your feet. Not even kidding, because when you keep pointing up for four minutes, it really will. I mean, it, is, it really is surprisingly hard. Question Do you look to flex your feet and push up or point and no, you push point, up? It doesn't matter. You want to, you want to point. Just okay. keep those pointed back and up. We like to point our feet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I know you do. I mean, you're better than me on that. So it's. <laughs> So keep keep pointing as much as you po as possibly can, and you point behind and upward, and uh, and the upward position is is tiring. And what's funny with this one is that usually the the hard one is this, the the laying out. I mean, you know, the extension mm -hmm. it's already pretty hard. But once you had this Scorpio retraction, then it becomes the hardest. So then laying down feels cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Levels of play field, you know, the playground. It's 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 kind of funny. Yeah, so that's awesome. Are, these are really, I mean, it's super simple, but if you add enough tension to it, so I'd recommend 20 seconds of reps and then 10 seconds, uh, yeah, 10 seconds of rest after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 20 seconds, 10 seconds, and you can do for eight. You can go for, you know, beginners might, might have only four, four rounds in them, but you probably can do eight. But um, anywhere from four to eight rounds is already pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, I can feel it already. Yeah. Just from doing two, I'm like, oh, it's warm now. It's it's a it's, it is a good workout. Surprisingly, um, it really it really works really well. Um, and that's a great thing because we don't have the same horizontal. Yeah, and exactly. it's the same muscles. Yeah. So and and then so ideally, and uh, I don't want to transition into bend right away, but since it's similar to this, you can literally get into that Superman plank. And if you have a band, instead of just holding your hand right there, you just wrap your band somewhere around something, you know, whether it's uh, the, the foot of the, uh, the table that's stable or like a door handle or something that's holding up. And mm -hmm. then you can literally just do pulls either in front of you. I mean, here, right there, you know, so mm -hmm. you would do pulling right there. So you keep your head up, obviously, and you try to pull where you're as if you were doing a pull up really but from, and this is from, you this is uh, on the floor flat yeah so yeah. you're so here you and then bend you're bend forward right there mm -hmm. and you would just do the exact same thing but instead mm -hmm. of just retracting your arm you would just pull on the band so it creates uh, that it creates that forward that back back and forth motion nice so it will add to to the it would add resistance basically to the movement so it's uh it's also a good one so you could do you can do a set with no band, a set with bands. You can do reps like this and then hold the static down. And that's definitely going to work the whole back as a, I mean, full back muscle, really. It's not really yeah. putting any focus on, on the specific part. It's just really activating everything. So there's Is there any moment where your arms, when they go out for the first part, are you letting your shoulders come up a little towards your ear? I mean, yeah. you're really holding from here. You're never really shrugging. I mean, what? You, you I mean, should, not yeah. all the way up, but like partially. A little bit. Or yeah, all the way down. So it'll be from yeah. here to here. Yeah. So all What's the way What's really down. important is to go super low. So here, I'm op opening a little bit, but then really I'm shrugging as much as I can to go down. And um, 
and that that will be a, an, an essential uh, portion is to shrub down. So don't let it go too high, basically. So you don't want to pinch. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But definitely go as low as possible. And that will be a, and it's honestly awesome. I use it, if you will, even without the band. It feels like you're pulling, really. It's mm -hmm. surprising, but it's true. Um, another one that, uh, that, is, uh, that doesn't require anything is the doorway pull-up. I don't know if you saw that one. I posted it. It's, um, it's really, I can mimic it here. It's really just, uh, and there's different levels. Obviously, it's more for beginners. So your, mm -hmm. your, your student might be already strong enough to do the advanced version. And it's the sitting down uh, doorway pull-up. So it's really you're grabbing a pull-up, you're grabbing a doorway, you're opening the door, grab the doorway, and then use that as a one-arm pulling, if that makes sense. So you sit down. And I'm going to use that right now, but it's similar, right? You would mm -hmm. grab it like this. Here, you would sit down. And then you pull. Ah. So you get to shrug. So the idea is to not lift with your legs when you get up. So you want to stay down and pull. You know, shrug it out and then pull back. Does that make sense? Stay low. Yes. Stay super low on your feet. And basically, but you don't. Like, you do it with the the frame, not the yeah, actual door. Yeah, with the door frame. You have the doorway. You open the door and you grab mm -hmm. the frame, ah. just like that, as a flat mm -hmm. grip, and then you pull. So it gives you that forward shrug. You know, so. You get that with the first movement we talked mm -hmm. about, and then mm -hmm. you get the forward pull with that doorway pull up. And again, it's not super hard, so you can always add, if you do four minutes, you can just do a bunch of reps like this, or even just mm -hmm. shrugs, and then keep it in, you know, for 10 to 20 seconds, and you alternate, boom, and then hold it in, and then you switch arm, and it works really well. I mean, it's... Uh, are you opening your torso at all? Or are you staying straight on? No, you're trying to... I mean, you're trying to... Keep yourself aligned your and then just here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're trying to get really that nice shrug in the shoulder. And, and then you can hold it right there. Mm -hmm. And it's surprisingly hard as well. You know, again, these movements, if you add the volume to it, it becomes tough. It's just that the first time people tell you, yeah, whatever, man. You know, I can do a million. And then after 20, they die. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, the form goes away, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, eventually, like, something eventually gives up, you know, and, uh, and their humbling movement, like you were saying, is the humbler. Yeah. <laughs> the humbler. <laughs> yeah, all these are little humblers, you know, they, they, this is pretty solid. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, so, again, this is more of a beginner movement. The, the, the first one we talked about is a little more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, you know, hopefully uh, uh, people that are watching give it a try. And, and I mean, you can do anything that's beginner, do it long enough, you'll be tired, I think. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it doesn't matter, really. Like a wall set is going to be beast already, you know, mm -hmm. if you do long enough. Anything is hard if you do it right, really. Even just walking, just walk for 10 hours, you'll be tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, it's, very, uh, it's very efficient if you do it right. Um, another movement that doesn't require anything at all and that actually will work reverse is everything against the wall because it works your extension. So I love every, pretty much all the uh, handstand work. We'll get, basically, it's going to be an extension, right? So it's not going to be a pulling motion, but still, you're going to get a lot of work in the lats and the shoulders. So it's going to be a great stabilization movement. So mm -hmm. everything that's um, pretty much the one that I would recommend a lot is either the the handstand push-ups. Yeah. Whoever can do them uh, against the wall, do those. And if you can't, you can just do the 90 degree and stand into a, a 90 degree uh, hole like this and really try to really extend right there, you know, opening the shoulders. Mm -hmm. This is giving you a nice hold. So same thing. If you combine- Facing the wall, feet, right? Yeah, feet against the wall. So, so you're facing the wall, absolutely, yeah. You know, I think I know this wall. one. Let's see here. Go for I'm gonna it. try it. This is oh, I found out a good way to measure. If you want to yeah. figure out where your hands should be, you go yeah. into this. Find your feet. Yeah. Put your hands where your feet were. Exactly. And then heel under your butt. And then push away. Oh God. And that's it. Okay. And that's it. You're doing it. And then from here you can shrug up. Lola. Feel <laughs> 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 the classic. Nice. And that's good. See, and and then from here you. Can lift one leg up. Yeah. 
and point your toe. Yeah, there you go. But pushing your heel on the on the leg that's against the wall. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Yep, that's it. And then you keep yep. shrugging, you know. Yeah, like, just holding this is hard. Yeah, this is hard. And you're also kind of increasing your your um, your range of motion. Yeah, your downward dog sort of a stretch. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so Ooh, my feet are dirty. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You cool. get a nice light extension, and you can do this. So that's the transition to the third movement that I wanted to talk about. Um, I mean, I forgot if it's the third or the fourth, probably. But basically, you can combine this one with the dive bomb push-ups. Remember those? Yeah. Either, when you pike up, basically you're in a pike. You go down, and then push back up. So it's basically I'm gonna try and do one. Um, I'm not sure what. Hold on, let me just put that a little lower here. Let's see if it works. Hey, Mina. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, hey? So it's really just um. You know, this one where you go, you're in the plank, uh -huh. up a little bit, just downward, go down here, move mm -hmm. forward, to the, ah, yeah, and then push back up. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. the whole point is to try to get to your hips here, and that's, that's where it becomes interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> It's been so long. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking it's hard. It's, it's stuff you can see the, the imbalance already in my elbows. <laughs> yeah, see you know what I mean? It's oh, like, that one's tiring. <laughs> yeah, so you can combine these uh straight holds on, on the wall, which are obviously statics. Hey Elizabeth. You can shrug a little bit and uh and then you would go to the dive bone push ups when you're warm and you can back and forth do like the little uh the little uh, drill like that, back and forth. Yeah. And uh, and say it ain't thing. easy, guys. It ain't easy. I, ch <laughs> I challenge you to do one correct. I just <laughs> struggled real hard. <laughs> yeah, the dive bone push up is a pretty good struggle. And what you can do when you for those who for those who want to try, you can do same thing. About uh, I would reverse the amount of time on this. Basically, I would work out for ten seconds and rest for twenty. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing 20 10, I would do 10 20 because it's hard. So, you Real basically hard. you get to do anywhere from mm -hmm. you know five to ten reps, and then you hold and then you, you rest for 20 seconds and you do it for four minutes. And that's uh, that's already a good struggle. Is there you know, is there a modification to that? Like, say, nope. <laughs> he's like, no, you don't nope. get a break. Struggle you get down real. on your knees, you get down on your knees, you deal with it. it. Basically, you get the struggle. You get the, ah, you know, you squeeze. You want to squeeze, so you want to feel. It's a lat muscle, really. I mean, when mm -hmm. you push, it's really all back. It's mostly, I mean, it's everything, but it's a lot of back. So you squeeze everything together, and then when you fail, boom, you fail. You could do it again. You know, Start over. Yep. It's like a, it's like a handstand. You just got to practice it, and then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you will get it. But it's, uh, it, it's just a struggle, and as long as we know it, we're good. It's really, it's a tough, it's a tough move. And. What you can do is work in your plank. So if you can't come back up, you just go there, you mm -hmm. hold the plank a little longer, and then press up. Mm -hmm. Just because the plank will give you more work. So when yeah. you're going back, though, you're kind of pushing with your butt up, right? Downward dog. Yeah, it's you're, like, you're, you're like our stripper push-ups, except it without being on the floor. Yeah, pretty so, much. I mean, you're super, yeah. Jesus yeah, exactly, Christ. Exactly, okay, exactly. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I got yeah. it now. You exactly. got you to gotta hover and then shift your weight. You it's a, it's, yeah. Forward, forward. Yeah, nice. nice. Oh, I'm going to stop there for now. <laughs> and then you really anyway. got to tuck your elbows in, really. Like, it's really it's like a chaturanga sort of thing. Yeah, it's got to really stay stiff in there and then you press back in there. Yeah. It's, um, it's really good. You'll see it's a lot of triceps and, and embracing the failure is mm -hmm. a very important thing on this one because, uh, a lot of people will fail. I fail. You know, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's I just failed once that I got it at the second time, but I don't yeah. know if I can do it three times. <laughs> That's that, you know, we're going to try like, this. Yeah. You, you, guys. Just, you just build it up and then it, it will, it will work. Uh, it will work pretty good. Honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, 
this is this is uh, this is one of those who work pretty well. Um, I would do um, so. Just uh, if you want to continue on this, I have uh, two more things. I mean, I have many. You know me. I got <laughs> yeah. of those. <laughs> but, yeah. But two one two other ones that can really work well. I think uh, would be uh, side planks. Because surprisingly, the side planks and it's like a variation, a twisting mm -hmm. and opening. So it get it gets you. Um, it's basically a trunk workout in a way. So because I think this is what we need. As far as pulling, you know, it's not just uh, um, it's not just doing a pull up. It's just you got to work front, back, and and side as well. So the the side the side plank uh, variation, you know, this one. So mm -hmm. anywhere, I mean, you can't see anything I'm doing right now, probably, but I can see it. Like anywhere like this, anything, mm -hmm. anything like that, any like that, with the twisting. Mm -hmm. So. Ah. Anything that twists, you know, but really you want to twist the torso. Down. And what it does is it really grabs the whole chain. And it's hard to explain everything that it does, but it's really good if you have zero equipment. You'll work your full trunk, you'll get twisting motion, you'll get a lot of lap work. And again, if you should apply the proper time to it, it's going to destroy your core properly and nice. So the side twist, push up, I would definitely do those. Uh, plank, sorry, not push-ups. And uh, last but not least, uh, without any, um, without any equipment, I would do donkey kicks. It might sound crazy, but it's a lot of plank ing with a lot of compression and extension. So that's mm -hmm. what we need for pulling, actually, because people forget how much compression pulling requires. But you get really like tuck everything right when you're holding it right there. You get a yeah. really hollow. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you're, hollow, you're never really just letting it stretch out here to yeah. make so sure everything is. You know, all the hollow work, you know, hollow mm -hmm. body workout uh, is good. So the basic, you know, floor hollow like this on the floor, it's actually good too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <interrupt>. but <laughs> no, it's totally better me. All the work on the floor when you yeah. lay down is good. And then all the donkey kicks are good too. So. I can, you know, don't get kicks. You remember these? I don't know if you remember. But... Yes, I remember. My favorite. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? And you get a kick out <laughs> on the lat, and it's a support movement, and it's really, uh, it works pretty solid. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's good for that. you guys doing your handstands. We have a little handstand class now. And um, if you're working on that, this is excellent conditioning for that as well. Yeah, it's really good. So, this is really good. Um, I want. I can also go over a, a few um, a few band workouts really there, because if I don't know if you have students that have bands, I hope you do. But if you do, then really just a little band like this. I mean, that's it. It goes a long way. With that, you can get beast really. Like it, it can be that small. If you double yeah. it up, it becomes so heavy. That you can't even pull on it. So there are a lot of people that have Sarah bands. Do you think that yeah. that would work as well? I mean, it's going to be lighter resistance. Is it? it I but. mean, yeah. It, all, honestly, any band works. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I mean, it's, it's really about the length. And even yeah, if it's and the than, resistance or the tension, you can yeah, make it. Yeah, it's the, what, what's limiting is the size. So for for girls that have you know the thigh bands, like the leg bands that are too short, it's a little annoying because there's not that much range of motion, but if they have it, you can always wrap it up around something and just do shrugs, mm -hmm. you know, from a small band. That's mm -hmm. cool, too. Most of you guys have fair bands. I know you do. Say what? My people, most of them have fair bands, at least. Yeah, so it's it's, yeah. it's it's a wider range, right? It's like more like these ones, right? Yeah. Um, let me grab it. I'll show you. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's like that, but it's a little bit less strong. There it is. What's up, guys? I use it to warm up my shoulders a lot too. Um, yeah. So is it's this, this it? guy. It's it's uh oh yeah, it's, it's not as strong, but it's you know yeah. you can still create a lot of tension with it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Yeah, that's completely fine. So you 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 guys, I mean, obviously you probably taught how to do them. I, I don't know what you guys have learned or not, but wrapping it up around any around anything really. Uh, yeah, I can give us some um, examples of so like a lot of things that you 
you can do at your house. You don't need, we usually put them around the pole or something, but <laughs> now yeah, that we don't I mean, have that, you can I, still. Anything really, the thing is, you don't even need a pole. I mean, you can do it with your feet as well. As well, I'll show mm -hmm. you a different alternative, right? So let me just put that up a little higher. I don't know if that helps, but so I'll show you an alternative, like the, the basic stuff. Um, a little higher, maybe. A little higher. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, somewhere out right here. Yeah. Just grab your bed. Mm -hmm. Stay right there. Go low. So, don't say too stiff, right? You want to be mm -hmm. nice on the legs. And then you just shrug it out. So, you can't really see my shrug, but the whole point is to shrug out here mm -hmm. and pull. So, you can do uh, the belly ones, but you can also do uh, face pulls where you'd stand mm -hmm. here and you retract, so not too high, but about shoulder width, about shoulder height, and then pull into your face, so you can pull down. Yeah, and, and I, face pull. so this yeah, is well this is like a perfect little uh, yeah, prop for this, but yeah, yeah, you guys, if you have anything to wrap it up, we can do it standing, I'm just gonna yeah. hit something, there's so much stuff around, yeah. but you can do it standing, um, you wanna keep it like 90? Yeah, 90? a little lower, yeah. See. Yeah, and this is not even heavy enough, so I'm just going to grab it. If it's not heavy enough, you can just grab it a little closer to create more tension. Yep. And then you can pull to face as well. And then, I mean, I just happen to have a pull, but... No, but you can, well. you can pull to face as well. So combine those two, because they'll definitely change uh, the angles. And that's yeah. good. And then if you do that on the floor, same thing, then you got the overhead. The overhead resistance. You yeah. just wrap it around a couch leg or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be the, that would be doing the same thing. Uh, the other thing you can do for actually conditioning, I mean, uh, for warming up, sorry, mm -hmm. is the pull aparts. So these are probably doing, and I'll just show it again, just in case. Mm -hmm. These, and you retract, you retract your shoulder blades together. You squeeze them together. You really open. And same thing, you can get some hold. And here, you want to really extend your arms, and you want to. Tuck your rib cage in when you extend, when you're at the full extension. You want to tuck the solar plexus in and the pelvis in big time. Easy, mm -hmm. throw on your grip. And then you get the right. sides. You can, side, can go sideways as well. Mm. I like that. Yeah, it's really good. It's a uh, I like that one when you're twisting, you're using your lat more on yeah, that side. Yeah, so you can twist and open to the side and you can do uh, 10 reps straight, 10 reps on the side and 10 reps on the other side. Repeat three or four cycles. That's pretty good already. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't have access to any of those, uh, um, basically, if you can't wrap your band, your band around anything, I'm just trying to give, you know, uh, all the scenarios, possibilities. But you can always um, step on your band. Mm. It's, it's going to be more shruggy, but you step on your band and you just create resistance like this and you just shrug it up like this. Or you can try and go to the sides or you can try to lift up a little forward. But basically, mm. and you can wrap up your, your hands a little lower, but that's going to trigger the back work. You know, it's going to yeah. trigger a little bit of back workout. You know. As well here too. by creating resistance with your feet so that's oh, yeah. uh, it's just a trick you know it's a hack in a way but it works it's uh i just wanted to cover that up as well as just in case you know people have nowhere to... you got all the planes of motion there if you're laying flat you got the overhead stuff if you're standing yeah. up we get the pulling back yeah and then the opening and then if you're standing on the band you're pulling from the floor yeah. So, and and uh, and last but not least, and I'm I'm backtracking a little bit, so sorry about the mess. But basically, um, we talked, we talked, we covered the uh, the nine degree uh, mm -hmm. uh, handstand. Sorry, you can do uh, the pipe. You can do pipe pushups from the floor, really, just as well. And it's going to cover the same. It's going to be basically a negative pull, really. You're coming down to the floor. You know, your head down to the floor, and then you're pressing up. It's really going to it's a little easier than the dive bomb push-up, so it's an intermediate movement. So if you can't do the dive bomb push-up right away, then you can do a little bit of pike push-ups from the ground. 
And like a, a downward dog. Like a downward dog. But mm -hmm. but the, the point the difference is, is that um, it's a little less uh, wavy in a way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want to yes. really be like it's on that slant. up and down just mm -hmm. to get a proper uh, straight motion. But And it's not easy at all. If you do it right, it's just not easy. You can pause at the bottom as well and then press up. Not easy. Uh, and if it's too easy or if you get students that are too strong for this one, you can put your feet on the, on, the, on the chair. So you elevate your feet and then boom, you get more height. So it gets a lot heavier <laughs> when you reach the floor. So it's uh, these are all really good, good movements. I feel that could, uh, I mean, that could create really good workouts, you know. You don't yeah. need much. It's, uh, it's just about uh, creating enough time under tension that we said. It could be four minutes, but if you beast it out, and we covered, you know, literally with what we said, you could you could set up uh, three or four sets of four minutes. Mm -hmm. You mix what we talked about. You take about two movements each time, and you make three to four rounds of four minutes. I guarantee you'll get tired. Yeah, and, and uh, this is this is really great because we need we need to think about our different planes of movement that we have because. Yeah. We sim we can't just simply lift up into the air right now, so um, we need to find ways like this to get those muscles and get creative. You don't really need weights. Yeah, no, you don't. Your your body is enough weight. We know that already because we lift ourselves and we we yeah. get jacked. Or yeah. we, you know, know, but um, this is just another thing to show you that you don't like bands are nice. They help, but you don't even really need them. You you no excuse. You yeah, can exactly. still do it. There's absolutely zero excuse. Quarantine, no excuse. <laughs> Quarantine, no excuse. And also, um, for those who are too strong, every everything that we showed about the band pulls, you can do single arm as well. You just grab the band with one arm and just beast it out one arm. Using yeah. all your stabilizer muscles on the yeah, opposite exact, side. Exact, yeah, yeah, it, it's it really is hard. hard. Yeah, you get it's hard, super hard. So you do all the variations with the band can be done with just one arm. And it's going to add a little bit more tension and, mm -hmm. you know, add gains, gains to the game. So it's, it's, gains. It, it, it's all about yeah. the <laughs> but, uh, So, yeah, th these are, I feel we, we covered, uh, you know, a good amount of movements that you need absolutely nothing uh, to do. And uh, I'm just um, trying to feel, I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, check if I didn't forget anything, but... Um, and also, I mean, there's another, uh, there's actually a few others that you can do, but uh, the truth is, um, same thing, you need kind of like a, a longer band, but if you can do overhead squats with the band, that is going to really fire your body. And even without the squat, without the, the, the band, really, just overhead squats. Literally, just put your hands up, mm -hmm. do squats for literally four minutes, mm -hmm. your back is going to burn like, like hell. It's not, I'm not even kidding. It's really going to burn. So. You mean so, just like separating? Yeah, just overhead squats. Simple like that, you know, mm -hmm. or even just these. If you retract, if you tuck your shoulder blades together, really, and just fire that back strength when you're doing that pull up, that uh, squat, sorry, uh, is going to fire. You'll feel that your back is going to feel super retracted. So if you do four minutes of squats or two minutes mm -hmm. of squats, and two minutes of the first movement we talked about, the Superman to the Scorpio retraction, man, your back is gonna fire up. Like, big yeah, fire. and I found a lot of the stuff that we're, uh, just cause I haven't done, I, I haven't taught fitness in a long time. I usually just stick with Ariel nowadays. Yeah. But now that we're at home and we, we have to find ways, um, I've been kind of coming back to that a little bit more. And I'm finding you holding your arms out in certain ways makes all the difference in the world, depending on what angle you're at. So like instead of keeping them in, if you're leaning back with your abs and you have your arms out or overhead, it makes it usually 50% harder, I would say, <laughs> as long as, you know, as long as you're not like collapsing. Yeah. But uh, we can just sit there. What were we doing the other day? I think we were doing these like leaning back things. And then we were just taking one arm at a time yeah. and just holding it. And it's exhausting. And you can go back farther. And then when you do both, yeah. and you're trying not to like, you know, it's, yeah. it's all the abs you need, actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I mean, all these things. It, a lot of time, people find it too easy because they don't do it long enough or good enough. Mm. People that don't feel the, the, the burn is because you know they're not 
putting enough tension in the movement or mm -hmm. did you just, you know, doing too, you know, for too little time. So yeah. Get a and I'm point. finding doing stuff um, also like speed wise, doing it really fast and a lot, a lot of reps and versus like doing the same thing really slow, but then feeling all the contraction. It yeah, um, could be the same exercise and that just to me, like, I feel like I'm targeting more the strength when I take the time to control it, hold it longer. And then the other way I'm still doing, I'm doing like the more fast twitch cardio, but it could literally be the same thing. And it um, feels totally different. Like I might be more sore from one or the other, or maybe I got more cardio out of one, but all those angles matter. Yeah, they do. They do. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and, uh, and again, um, we'll We'll try to repose that so that people can keep track of it and can make another post mm -hmm. to sum up uh, what we talked about. But uh, I think these would be a good start to uh, to train without anything because there's other stuff, you know, the chair pull-ups like I talked about. Mm -hmm. this, uh, there's other curls. Like there's stuff that are called uh, whatever the name is, uh, pelican curls, for example, or chair pull-ups. Or pelican curls is a little more advanced. It's mm -hmm. actually it's more of a dude workout, but it's a uh, you would grab, you know, you would get yourself under a table and then pull up like this. Literally just pull yourself up, if that makes sense. It's basically a reverse curl. It's hard mm. with your flat hands. And it's, it's shorter range of motion, but it's basically lifting from here to here, if that makes sense. So you'd be like in a tabletop like this, so your feet are on the ground, boom, and then you just curl back up from under a table. Mm -hmm. You're facing up. And it's pretty damn hard so there's other variations and the chair pull-ups like i did you know i think you saw that one where you put yeah. those, those two chairs and then these are really awesome really they'll burn because what's cool with those is because the chairs are not as stable as a like a p-bar for a parallel bar right because they're chairs so there's a little discomfort there's a little you know give in, in between so you got to really stabilize the chairs as you're pulling mm -hmm. so it creates a good uh, proprioceptive workout as well. So kind of like, <laughs> so sort of the bosu ball for pull-ups. It's, uh, it's hard to explain, but it's, it creates a good workout really. So you got to squeeze that serratus. It's, uh, it works really well. So your pull up is very, very much recommended as well. And then if you're on that incline, it's also like the core, you know, yeah. use the core too at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. So these are mm -hmm. good, but, um, but yeah, so all, all the strength movements will work, but, um, Eventually, there's many variations to these, and playing with time and 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 uh, tension and rest will also make a lot of difference, you know, with those moves. So people yeah. can try the way, you know, different ways, different rest times, different amount of rest, uh, uh, and it will it will just work, you know, differently depending on how you do that. Yeah, and the way I was talking about it. Um earlier about the variety and changing it up. Sometimes I'll do the same thing for two days and do like that where I'll, I'll do, um, you know, less breaks, but more strength, or I'll try to do it longer and do it faster. Just, uh, I find different results from day to day if I do it like that. Plus it gives your body something else to do so you don't get too used to the same thing. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it is good to, to have staple movements, like compound stuff that you do mm -hmm. and then applying different ratios basically to it is a great way to trigger the body in different ways. It works well. And um, I don't know if you wanted to talk about your, your release stuff, because you probably have yeah. some, some, some cool, some cool stretches, just, you know, it mm -hmm. five minutes, but what to do. I'll, do it. I'll do it quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have eyes. some, I have some leg stuff because I think a lot of us are doing a lot of lower body and uh, without the pulling up. And I think for your people, they need to work on um, flexibility or they, if you feel too tight after all the strength training, um, it's better for me than just stretching is to apply some activity to that motion and contracting and then lifting on the other side. So um, I'm going to do two things with the legs. Uh, one of them, this is just going to, you could use a chair or anything. Um, if you're more flexible, you could use a table. If you're, the most flexible and you can go above 90, you would lay down and do this on the ground. But let's say we have a um, below 90, we wanna keep our hips nice and square. So I call it the mono butt cause you only get to see one butt cheek. And I'm just <laughs> gonna take, yeah, take my foot 
and I'm just going to push down into the chair. You can't even see anything happening. But what I'm doing is I'm just squeezing my hamstring, keeping okay. my leg nice and straight, and I'm keeping it parallel, and I'm keeping my foot flexed for maximum tension. Right. I'm just going to hold it for about 20 seconds. Cool. And then I'm going to take that foot, and I'm going um, to keep it there, and I'm just going to fold forward. If you're this low, you're going to need to bend your knee. And you want to fold at the waist so you're nice and flat. And you can stretch here. And again, when you stretch, you don't want to open up. You want to keep the mono butt going. Yeah. Keep everything square. Don't do this. If you're rounded, you got to come up higher. Wherever you're flat, and then you're going to stretch that muscle for at least 30 seconds. Then after that, you're going to use the front side of your legs. So now we're going to use our hip flexor, and we're going to lift it off the chair. And you want the, the foot height to be as high as you can go with a straight leg. So try to find something that whatever your height is, whether it's on the couch, the table, or if it's above that, then you can just do this on the floor and push into your hand. And then, because um, I want it to be a struggle to lift your leg off. Then you're going to yeah. do 10 of these guys. So if it's too low, it's obviously super easy. We want mm -hmm. it to be as high as possible with nothing else changing, back nice and flat, lifting up, and then you're going to come down and do the same stretch. Cool. So that's for your hamstring, and then you're using your hip flexor, so we're kind of lengthening the back. Another area is the hips get really tight, especially when you're doing a lot of core stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, this is for the hip flexor and the quad, and it gets me really good every time. So the best way I like to do it is put my knee against the wall. So I want my heel, let's get over a little bit. I want my heel right in line with my butt. Don't let your foot go side to side. Yeah, yeah. This is another thing where you got to keep your hips square. Then I'm going to keep this front leg 90. Nice. And um, I'm going to sit up. You might find that even here is a stretch. So you can always stack something under your hands if you have towels or books or yoga blocks or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you're fine there, you're going to come all the way up. And That's even cool. this, I can already feel a huge stretch right here. And then you can even use the wall and kind of pull yourself back a little bit. I'm going to press myself back. And then I'm going to tuck my pelvis. So I'm not going to let myself arch. Pull it do in. You push it, do you push in your other leg as well? Do you press backwards? Yeah. Yeah. So just getting up first. And then once you're okay here and you get to a straight position, then you're going to use that front leg to push back. Okay, yeah. And then your goal is to get your back on the wall and maintain a tuck. And you will get the biggest stretch. I can barely get – my legs are already really tight from all the stuff I've been doing. Yeah, okay, cool. and then the other thing you can do is just take it forward um, and sink your hips forward. And this, you might have to walk your foot out a little farther, and then you're going to stretch it. So I'm pulling it in with that first one. I'm squeezing my hip flexor to get it um, to get a contraction going. And then when I go this way, I'm doing a more uh, a release stretch. So I'm starting with the active flexibility of contracting it and making it burn, and then I'm releasing it into this, and I'm still trying to keep that hip pulled forward. I'm not going to let my foot move side to side. If you get really comfortable here, this is like for my people. You can also walk yourself back to the wall. Oh, Jesus. I'm not very flexible right now. I'm going to push forward <laughs> as far as you can go. Um, or you can balance with your arms up to make it a little harder. But this is just going to stretch it out that way. Um, uh, oh, and one more simple thing. When you're doing a, just a lunge, you can bring your foot in a little closer and do a similar thing where you're going to bend your knee slightly, keep your foot where it is, and pull your pelvis in so your right, right um, hips over or hips under your shoulders. And then you can keep this without letting any arch in your back happen. Go as low as you can. As soon as you start to arch, stop. So you want to go as low as you can, hold it, and then you can slide your foot out and go out to your lunge. And that will help you get nice. yeah. a lot lower. And even when you're in your lunge, a lot of people think simple stretch. Um, I see a lot of bent knees, so try to keep your back leg straight first. You can bring your hips as high as you need to, then work your way down. This should be 90, obviously. Most people know this. If you get low enough and then you extend from your lower back out through your head, you're going to feel a much different stretch that's active because you're squeezing your quad instead of just letting this collapse happen. Um, and I think I got one more. This one's for your shoulders. Uh, I oh this is the humbler one I was talking about. This one is so <laughs> let's go humbler. Hard. Let's be humble, right? Yeah. So this is to help you with your strength and range of motion overhead. You mm -hmm. want to keep. Um, I'm going to do it against the wall, but before I go, you want to avoid 
doing it like this. So yeah. we want to keep the elbows in line with the shoulders. A lot of people tend to start making little princess hands. So I'm trying to be French fries, not pizza. Okay. And as you get higher, it's going to get harder. So what we do, you can do this just standing up, but I like to use a wall just so I know I'm doing it right. A uh, little bend in the knees. You don't have to be 90. I mean, I guess if you want to make it harder, you can go down more. But I'm going to take a neutral spine. So you're not allowed to arch at all. Um, and you don't have to be tucked, just neutral. And you're going to keep your elbows into your sides. And you're going to take those blades up. And the higher you get, the harder it's going to be. If you can even get them to the wall without doing the princess hands, <laughs> oh, yeah. then you can start to extend them. And it's really hard. You're going to feel it in, uh, in between your shoulder blades a lot and your upper back. And it's just the higher you go, people just start to lose it. It yeah. feels like you're pulling your elbows in a lot more when they're just straight. But that's what you want to think of. Pull your elbows you in, push your so hands once, away. Once you, touch the, once, once you touch the wall with your hand, you try to get a, 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 yeah. a, straight, a straight extension with your uh, yeah. arms. Okay. And I have no, I have really tight shoulders from Ariel. Some of my Ariel friends are very flexible. They're great at contortion and extreme flexibility. But a large percentage of us are just so tight up here from all the strength stuff we do. So this is a good way. It's still, uh, it makes me sweat too if I do enough of them and I go slow enough. Mm -hmm. And I take my time and I really focus on it. Like I could just do it sitting here. And it's, it's hard. It's like you don't want to let your back arch, though, because that's the common thing that's like, oh, this is easy. It's you not. Would, you would do what, like sets of 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Um, I usually just, I don't really time it. I do a very slow set of 10. I might do, like, if I was doing a bunch of uh, shoulder warm-up stuff, if I had the time, mm -hmm. I'd probably just do a set of three and do 10 of them and just concentrate. You can go on your own timing, this, there's no speed or, or slow as needed. I have to go as slow as I need to to concentrate and be really aware of my form because um, if you rush it, there's no point. It's actually really hard to go slower. So I do 10 slow ones, and um, you could do maybe a set of three of those and make sure you're going to keep it out like this. Yeah, some people can't even the... get their hands to the wall. Like Some people yeah, will yeah. get I'm to the I'm sitting here. down in the lotus right now, in a half lotus, so it's, it's adding to the challenge. Ah, Yeah. So. And then, um, uh, oh, you, let me try, actually. Is this a half lotus? Yeah, just a half lotus. But it's, and, oh, and yeah. That, yeah, it's creating, like, It's a little like, harder, because so you have a tuck, I think. Uh, but it's yeah. Good, it's awesome here <laughs> to get you. I'll, I'll try all the, all of these shoulders opener. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try for sure. And then, like, to stretch and getting to do a more passive stretch. So you're still pushing into it, but you know, doesn't necessarily require the same uh, engagement as that overhead one does. I like to finish it with this because then I've engaged it. So it's more, it's going to be easier to stretch it out now. Yes. Um, I do. So I want my hips, excuse me, back, my hips over my knees. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to walk my hands out a little farther. So don't do challenge. We're going to take it into a little prayer hands and we're trying to keep this in line so we don't want to wing it out keep them in line and push your um your chest and your armpits towards the floor don't look down either you want to look forward yeah. and try to get as low as you can i usually hold this for about 30 seconds and then i take it towards my head for 10 and as i do that i'm already starting to get deeper with the motion you can probably see it. Yeah, and then yeah. and then I hold it. So I, I you could just do it once after all that. It's more about holding it longer if you can, if you want to make progress. You don't really need to do reps, but you yeah, do yeah. have to hold it for at least 30 seconds or you're just doing maintenance. I mean, that's only if you're actively working towards progress. If you're just stretching to loosen yourself up, 30 seconds is good. If you want to do pro progress, definitely go beyond 30 seconds and you will get deeper because your, your Golgi reflex will relax. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's good. it. I mean, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good finisher. Yeah, and I actually, I like to do this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, sometimes I can just do it by itself, but if I do a bunch of strength stuff, 
to begin with. If I did a really hard workout, I like to end with stretching after so that I don't get so tight. Um, you know, I think a lot of times I'll go to sleep and wake up and I'm like, oh God, like you don't realize it at first. But if you can stretch yourself out after, like it's good to warm up, but if you do um, stretching on the back end of it after all that, it's a really great way to make sure your muscles don't like just yes. get swollen too tight. It's a good way to finish for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's awesome. That's cool. I mean, I think we covered a bunch of stuff that people can, uh, can, uh, can do at home really. I mean, they don't need anything really. Instagram yeah. is telling me that we have a minute left, but, uh, I don't know. Oh, dang. We almost did a full hour. Yeah, yeah we did. And, um, but that was awesome. I mean, I think really, you know, we show people that it, there's there's plenty of ways to work out. I mean, what we covered covers legs, core, pulling, some pushing. I mean, it's really a full uh, a full spectrum thing. So obviously, yeah. if they have questions, they can ask you and ask me, and uh, we'll try to answer some of their. Uh, yeah, check out our Instagram page. Yeah, yeah, guys, check check jagged, VDF uh, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Street we'll Workout Academy. Pole. We'll learn some cool, yeah. and yeah, we'll uh, let's um, let's uh, let's touch base in a few weeks and see uh, see how it goes. You know, maybe we can uh, do that again and do uh, more uh, other stuff uh, that don't require any other equipment either. And then we'll uh, you know we'll take. Yeah, it go see Nicholas.